All right, we're going to move along to uh, to our next speaker, Javier Javier Torre or Torre. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. Oh, it's good to see you. Uh, yeah. Welcome. Are you, are you, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, so yeah, so we're going to be hearing from Javier today about building an asset inventory database using PostGIS, the case of yes. GIS Water. Yeah. Take it away. Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, uh, let me say we have worked uh, for 10 years in this project, and when we discovered PostGIS, uh, it changes my life, but not only my life, life of our team. Okay, uh, we had a second opportunity because we have we, we was a civil con, civil engineering consulting firm. I am civil engineer, and right now we are uh, software developers uh, providing this kind of services using PostGIS. But let me explain you. Uh, we are a multicultural company based in Barcelona with more than fifteen years old, and right now we help lots of water utilities all over the world using GIS Water thanks to PostGIS. Uh, this is our team. It was not possible with all of them. No? We, we are uh, highly motivated with our vision, our mission, and um, in fact, it was impossible to, to achieve uh, our project. Um, in fact, it's a tool uh, which provides an excellent ecosystem for water supply companies to uh, manage their asset uh, inventory. Um, Integrating uh, through PostGIS, the QGIS uh, environment in the uh, EPA, uh, API uh, water modeling softwares, as well as APNet for water supply uh, networks and uh, store water management model for urban drainage networks. Um, the project start uh, on 2012. And right now, after 10 years, uh, we have released lots of uh, new versions. Right now we are on 3.5. And uh, right now, as we know, because it is an open source project, as we know, uh, it's uh, used in more than 30 utilities, uh, medium, not large and small companies, medium companies, uh, more than 400 municipalities, uh, it is used in more than five countries. And right now, uh, more than 10 million people, 10 million servant people is uh, managed with, with, uh, with, with, a comp with a utility which uh, they use as GIS water. Here you can uh, see the two main repositories, the code stats. Uh, JS Water is a thick database project, as, as you will see after. No? But we have uh, two big uh, repositories: the the PL Square uh, repository and the Python repository. Because uh, as well, we are integrated as a plugin of QGIS. Uh, we have uh, a, a huge uh, plugin also. No? Here you can see the the stats after uh, uh, seven or eight years of of projects. Um, okay, uh, what are the main characteristics, no? what are the, the most important things that we have uh, done, we have achieved and solved in these uh, last 10 years? Okay, first of all, uh, it's a thick database, you will see. Uh, it is a graph-oriented data model. Um, it has the possibility to customize data model uh, as well as fitters or new columns for each user uh, by the use of uh, editable views, uh, as well as uh, water utilities they manage with um, water pipes. Uh, it has a dual phase data model. Uh, uh, it's two dimensions data model in order to manage the asset from the point of view of the inventory, as well you can manage the asset from the point of view of uh, water model, because sometimes it's not the same. Uh, it has uh, lots of backend features because it's a thick database. And uh, after the finish of this presentation, I will explain to you the most difficult challenge solved in these years. Thick database, right now uh, it has two templates for water supplier for urban drainage. This, this, these are the numbers, more uh, close to 200 data tables on water supply and more than 254 urban drainage. 
after uh, catalog tables, uh, config tables, metadata tables, selector tables, temporal tables, everything is used in order to provide uh, the best uh, ecosystem as possible. Here you can see the catalog tables, here you can see the config tables, here you can see the metadata tables, the selector tables and temporal tables. Uh, I will explain later on uh, what, what are selector or temporal and stuff. Uh, but not only has tables as a thick database, uh, there are more than 210 stored procedures for water supply and 215 for wind drainage, as well as more than 100 of trigger functions for each. Uh, it is a graph oriented data model. It means that uh, all the asset inventory is under the, the, the big idea of args and nodes. To manage uh, this, uh, to, to integrate this topology on the table of arcs, there are the uh, columns of node one and node two. And uh, there is a trigger called a topo control arc before insert or update of DGOM and the state, which provides this integration in terms of topology, you know, making a spatial intersection, looking for some kind of a a note on the initial of the arc as well for the end. This is for arcs and for nodes. There is some kind of uh, rules in order to guarantee the consistency that only one node is related on the same position, you not know, trying to uh, uh, do not create uh, some kind of mistakes for the users. Uh, this is a, a, a simple view of these triggers because they are so huge. No, but the core the, the, the core of the idea is this. Okay. Um, when we talk about that uh, the user can customize uh, their uh, data model with editable views, we say that uh, when a uh, user creates a new feature, let's say a valve, let's say a manhole, let's say a tank, a reservoir, a pipe, etc., no? uh, automatically is created a, a layer, a view, a view related to that. No? And on that view, uh, uh, user uh, is enabled to create as many columns as they like in order to manage with a huge level of customization what they are uh, looking for. No? Uh, in spite of the main data model, the core data model has more than 80 columns for, for most of um, uh, objects uh, um, that they are uh, created uh, on, on, the, on the template. Uh, when we are talking about, uh, we use uh, editable views, we are talking that uh, on views, we use the tablet fung extension no? with the function of cross tab in order to get, collect no? that custom uh, columns with custom values and to publish in a pivot table no? for that specific um, feature. And uh, we have uh, developed a trigger uh, instead of trigger for view, which is uh, capable to um, collect, uh, insert, updates, and deletes, and uh, use this expression. It was not easy to solve this. To uh, uh, instead of insert, update, or delete, uh, use the uh, physical tables to uh, manage with values of editable view. When we talk about uh, this is a this is a dual phase data model, uh, we are talking that the the asset the, the assets has two phases, no? The phase of uh, inventory and the phase of hydraulic model. Uh, I am a civil engineer, and here is my uh, good skills, no? Uh, uh, to talk about, uh, I I don't have good skills to talk about in terms of high informatics, but in terms of hydraulic, uh, we can say that one node can. Uh, can be lots of different things for the for water utility, but on the hydraulic model, only five, six uh, types is possible, no? And uh, the same for arcs. And uh, this dual phase data model uh, integrates everything uh, in, in one unique database, uh, creating a, a good experience for user, providing the capability to keep uh, out updated and to keep uh, 
synchronized inventory with hydraulic model, which is one of the, the best uh, things of this water and most uh, loved uh, issues. And same same for urban drainage. Um, both templates, both capabilities are on the same level, as well as uh, water supply or urban drainage. Uh, we use uh, API software for, for this, uh, I said before, uh, IPANET and stormwater management model, and, and same, same. The, 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 the features on the wall of uh, mathematical model are different that of the or, or from the wall of the asset inventory, and uh, GIS water, no? Uh, uh, enables the user to integrate uh, everything and everything synchronized. Um, in order to uh, guarantee with this, no, some kind of on-the-fly transformations need to be done each time a user no, needs to create a, a, new, uh, a new APA file in order to no, um, uh, import uh, from hydraulic uh, software, no? Uh, we, there are several on-the-fly transformations. Here you can see both of them, no? One node on inventory need to be converted on a link on the hydraulic modeling in order, because this node is some kind of ball, uh, flow regulator, some kind of pressure regulator, and a regulator needs one node on the initial point and one note on the end point in order to regulate something. Because if uh, the regulator needs to be a, a, a link, but for uh, GIS guys managing uh, asset inventory, it's not a good idea to uh, insert a valve or a pump as a link because it creates something like a shock, no? It's very easy for them to insert, to, to create this object as a node. PAM is a node, about is a node. And uh, JS Water makes this on the fly transformation when uh, we export the EMP file to APA softwares, creating these uh, short pipes, mm, uh, short links uh, in order to guarantee this capability and compatibility. Okay, um, after this dual, uh, phase data model, let me say a little bit about uh, backend fitters. No? As I talked before, uh, this is a thick database a project, and we have uh, different interesting capabilities uh, to do this. No? First of all, is the filters uh, with current user strategy. No? Uh, user uh, has views on QGIS, only views, editable views, or not able, but only views, no? And um, the different selectors, the selections that user needs, let's say sector, exploitation, let's say state, uh, let's say dates, et cetera, uh, are stored on database, on selector tables. Uh, and uh, these tables, no? Uh, are used to filter the different the different selections of user. This is the architecture of the source tables, unfiltered views, filtered views, and filtered. Uh, um, and by doing this, we know in every moment, in every time, what exactly is uh, uh, is showed to the end user. And as a result, lots lots of that trigger functions and functions that uh, we uh, show before are used knowing what exactly user is showing. And uh, this enables us to develop this huge ecosystem based on uh, store procedures, because we know uh, all the time what user is uh, seeing. Remember that uh, in order to with all of these selector tables are user to uh, know uh, what a user is watching and to uh, pro develop the trigger function in the story procedure by, by uh, controlling this, this approach, okay? Uh, but not only uh, has this, uh, well, okay, here you can see the, the selector tables, here you can see the, the, the logics applied 
for the views which they are acting as a filter, providing this uh, specific uh, point of view for the end user. No, this is the, 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 the filter of the states of arc, the view states of node, the view to state of by, by using the selector state current user uh, approach. But uh, as a backend database, a thick database is not only this strategy, uh, also uh, we have implemented the built-in forms into backend. User uh, can define these amazing forms in QGIS, but not only in QGIS, also in web clients that right now there are few web clients working with JS Water also. Uh, you, can, you, you, you need to define your forms on database you need to uh, use these config form fields for for each for, na for each form name, for each tab, for each column. You can design the layout name, the layout order, the data type, the widget type, the label, the tooltip, the placeholder. Everything is collected on this get form fields function, and everything is uh, provided from backend to client by uh, using a, a GeoJSON um, parameter. Uh, this is the architecture of these get form fields. Lots of functions from client. Let's say get feature insert, get info from coordinates, get info from list, get info from ID, get visit, get go to EPA, get catalog. All these functions that after that I will explain to you, they use as get form fields in order to build up this, geo, this JSON, uh, which is interpreted on client and providing this uh, form as, as, as user, as, as configurable as possible for, for user. Okay, uh, but not only a built-in forms uh, is a specific characteristic of backend fitters. Also, uh, we have developed our own toolbox more than 50 store processors uh, use it for water supply companies to uh, uh, improve their uh, data quality, data consistency, as you can see, are reverse, are shorter than specific length, check acts duplicated, check acts with same start and node, check acts with node start and uh, lots of uh, functions everything developed on the backend, every, everything as uh, store processors, and we have uh, done a dynamic uh, uh, toolbox in order to show to user that function is very simple to add a new function, including to customize functions for them. Here you can see the dialogue and here you can see the, the report because the toolbox not only has processes, has also reports, uh, which, uh, user can build the, the simple query on database on, and, and simple register that query and automatically you can have this dialogue on QGIS and also you can um, um, add dynamic filters, etc. Et uh, here you can see the, the get toolbox function and here you can see the config toolbox, no? the, get, the, the get toolbox function, uh, which is the function which you know, it's called uh, from client to database and database returns the uh, uh, JSON again and JSON is interpreted and JSON uh, no, prints uh, the dialogue for user and here user uh, can add their own uh, functions no, in um, table config toolbox to create uh, a new function to put the alias, the parameters and the input parameters, no, which means no, the, different, um, the different widgets that user needs in order to uh, provide the user experience that that function needs. No? Uh, this is the backend uh, fitter toolbox. Um, in addition, as uh, I said before, uh, there are lots of tables to config. No, everything is configurable. No, uh, in order to provide the best experience for user. And here you can see uh, the dialogue of config on QGIS again, only with one of these uh, two or three tables uh, in order to configure. No, um, lots of things to can be configured. Um, uh, with different roles for the role of user and also for the role of the admin. No, the, the, the whole project works with five roles, uh, basic, OM, edit, uh, API, and plan, and admin, six. 
and uh, everything is related to that roles. Uh, we use uh, the, the grant privileges for, for of, of Postgres to, uh, no, to restrict uh, information from tables, to restrict views, to restrict also functions uh, to specific user because on this uh, software is uh, used on uh, corporate environments and on corporate environments you need to restrict. And we use the, the, the database grant privileges in order to fix this. That is the best uh, for control roles, no? Because uh, database controls this, no? Um, here you can see the, the get config uh, function, uh, which calls the dialog and the set config function, which returns the information of the widget or, or modify it for, for user, okay? And uh, this backend, this huge and powerful backend has what, what, uh, some kind of API uh, because we have that 200, 300 functions that we said before. Um, most of them has a GeoJSON as an input parameter and returns uh, a JSON or GeoJSON as an output parameter. Uh, we have defined the syntax, we have defined the own standard uh, to work with, and uh, this is a, a huge environment for us as a developers to make simple things from uh, QGIS client, to make simple things from web clients, because the, the, whole, the full power is stored into database. And um, it's, uh, it enable, we have called it some kind of API. It's not an API, but you can put this fast API. And the only thing that you need to do is to, do, to, 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 to pass, because uh, that functions works thus with uh, GeoJSON as input and works as GeoJSON as output. No? Functions are uh, classified in different characteristics. And here you can see uh, on the wiki, no? the, the, the different functions that right now uh, are ready to use, not only for us, ready to use for somebody who decides to use GIS water. It's not easy, as you can imagine, no? This is a heavy project. Uh, as we are make, make lots of efforts to document and to um, make a stable, uh, this is a huge project. It creates some kind of barriers to entry. We, we knew this is one of our main uh, uh, worse things, but anyway, we have documented and here you can see the, the, these functions that you can use to, to, to work with your own um, process or, or, or need to, to know what that function uh, does. And we have defined it in a standard, no? Um, of the inputs and, and a standard of the outputs. Uh, lots of that functions uh, works with the GeoJSON because we use the GeoJSON on clients, uh, QGIS or web to, 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 to find maps and stuff, no? Or results, no, no. Some, most of that functions that analyze, they provide results in the GeoJSON in order to find, no? Uh, in an easy way, the, the results of these inconsistencies and et cetera on, on map, no? Um, and, and let me say to finish, no, um, uh, the most important uh, things solved, no challenge solved in this 10 year work, uh, work and, 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 and challenge that we need to, to solve on future maybe, no? The first one, it was to define this dual data model definition. It was a really a nightmare, no? To try to compatibilize the, mo the mathematical model against the asset inventory. Finally, we, we solved this. Uh, the second one it was, was to discover that it was possible to edit views. No, wow, but it's possible. You can use the trigger instead of to edit views. And uh, we developed the strategy of the, these edit views by using the, the selector strategy. No? 
Uh, after that, we had some kind of barriers with uh, QJS forms, with client forms, and uh, uh, we discovered that uh, we, we, we were capable to build up our own forms on database and to provide the same, GeoJ the same JSON for web client, for QJS, and, and we are removing the old QT standard forms of QJS, and we are implementing for the whole project this back and forth because it's fast, it's very configurable. It's uh, easier to, to, to maintain. Really, it was a, a good discovery. Also, uh, we, we, we finally, we, we need to develop our own API. We need to develop our own standards to communicate uh, backend with uh, client. And, and, and um, it was a good approach. And in fact, we are increasing this. Uh, and uh, we're trying to use uh, an equilibrate uh, position against code of on client or code on database. Obviously, code on database is more stable, is more robust, is, is, is amazing. We, only, we need to identify transactions, long transactions is the, the huge problem that we need to check everything uh, before to decide if we put our code on client or we put our code in, in backend. If we analyze that it's possible to put code on backend, everything to back end, no? Because it's really amazing, stable. Uh, we have developed functions 10 years ago that uh, on Postgres uh, 9.2, that it works perfect right now. No, it's really very stable. On the other side, on 10 years, we have changed our web client four times and we have changed QJS from Python 2 to, to Python 3 and on Postgres, nothing, stable. Everything is stable, no? Um, we, we identify that we need to, to move uh, loops on PLPSQL for pure SQL, no? Pure SQL is, 10 times, 100 times faster, no? And uh, we have removing loops and applying pure SQL. Very difficult, very complex syntaxes, sometimes unbelievable syntaxes, but, but when you solve, uh, suddenly that loop uh, disappears and 10 times faster, no? In order to increase performance, we use temporal tables, no? Something like cook, no? To cook data, to cook data with no wares, with nothing, nothing, only that data put it there and cooking, no? And uh, with no wear, uh, more velocity. And, and we have developed a debugging strategy, maybe, maybe develop on PLPSQL, the back is not the, the best uh, environment to do that. Our, our team loves uh, develop on PLPSQL and, and uh, every, everybody is, is motivated to do this, but we, have, we, we need to implement different strategies to do this. And that's all. Uh, I have only four minutes more. Uh, big thank you to PostGIS. And this is the URL of the project, giswater.org. And that's all. Wow. Just wow. Right. As well, say I said with when I discovered post GIS, Paul. This yeah. I, I I said this with. All right. So this is a huge, like you said, ten-year project. It's it shows its complexity, and it also shows like the care and design you've put into it over those years. The consistency of naming, the cleanliness of of your API. It's like, it's not 10 year hairball. It's like, it's a 10 year cut, cut jewel. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. Um, I guess I'll get take the uh, audience questions first. I have one question, but I'll, I'll save it. Um, Luis Damasio, uh, does GIS water yeah. and the hydraulic model work just yeah. in closed pressure pipes or also in open channels? Um, it works with EPA software works. In case of water supply, EPA software only works with uh, Presure uh, pipes, but the stormwater management model of EPI works uh, as well as uh, closed uh, pipes, but also on open channels. Using the HEC format is uh, the, the hydraulic engineering course of the Army of US. Uh, you, the HEC format, you can work with open channels. It is not a good software to work with complex open channels. Uh, the, the stormwater management model, you need to, to move to HEC RAS or EVER or something like this, but for simple open channels, you can use a stormwater management model. And if you use that software, you can use on, on GIS water because uh, the compatibility is 100%. Okay, I'm gonna take my question now. Uh, squeeze it in the last two minutes. So 
most open source software tends to like lie on in the infrastructure level. It's a database, it's a library, it's a utility. Um, and you've managed to you know, live the, fulfill the dream, which is the idea of building customer facing software that's still open source and is in fact deployed and used in production at 400 municipalities. Um, but in, presumably 10 years ago, you had zero or one. So how did you make that transition from like um, okay, uh, uh, this is a good question. No? The, the, the business model, no? Um, when yeah. um, 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 on, at some moment, some kind of uh, some or uh, ten water utilities uh, of Barcelona metropolitan area, they they contact with us and they request to uh, in, to to build up in another level what we had in that moment, no? And they create an association. And right now there is an association called JS Water, which we are only a members. The association is managed with an, uh, with a staff of water supply companies. They decide where the software need to go, and we are uh, a core developers. We are there are more developers right now in the association, no? It's a business model uh, which creates a, a mature environment to uh, be uh, there, no? to providing services. No? There are more than 20 water supply companies and more four or five developers right now, um, no? creating a mature ecosystem, uh, providing sustainability. And obviously, we say always, this is open, but it's not, it's not free. Is open, but it's not free. Uh, if uh, you uh, are, uh, if you like to feel safety and you need to feel sure in your uh, corporate, please uh, buy some kind of revenue in terms of uh, maintenance, which is not expensive, of course. No, but we will provide updates, feedback, fix, training, support. And, uh, I can imagine like crunchy data does. No, it's, yeah, yeah. it's the same. No, and the, the key point here is there are more than twenty water supply companies motivated uh, keeping this stable and for us uh, perfect because we have that revenue that is possible to go further with, with the project, no? to keep these minimums of uh, maintenance and to evolve uh, step by step each month. No? Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for coming and, and sharing this story. It's, it's been really eye-opening. Thank you, you, for the invitation.